Singapore is on the right path. Though small in size and limited in resources, the island nation is striving to do its part with good, far-sighted governance and policies. It has committed to make the transition to negative carbon emissions, self-sufficiency and circular systems. Singapore will be a livable, sustainable and resilient city of the 22nd century. It will be a place where humans and nature coexist in regenerative, circular systems. In the future, Singapore has transformed into an even more lush and green city-state. It is a home for humans and other living beings alike. It provides its residents with a great quality of life, with lots of amenities and community spaces that encourage a healthy and active lifestyle. Singapore is built for resilience. Biodiversity is thriving. It is self-sufficient in renewable energy, water and food, and is carbon neutral in its operations and in embodied energy. Yet Singapore is land limited. Its natural constraints have been a catalyst for the development of innovative solutions. In the future, it shrinks its urban footprint to be equal to one Earth or less. Singapore is an example that demonstrates how we can integrate circular systems into cities and enable change that benefits humans, the built environment and nature. In the future, living, working, learning and playing does not take place solely in dedicated spaces like offices or classrooms. Our neighbourhoods will transform from mono-use to multi-use districts and cater to every aspect of our daily lives. Our built environment will be designed and built safely, faster, more efficiently and sustainably. Construction will be planned and controlled remotely, driven by automation and high technology. Humans are mostly off-site and construction work is done mostly by drones and robots. Building typologies are flexible, adaptable and future-proof. They are designed for final disassembly and the repurposing of materials in a circular system. Production and logistics can be located in subterranean levels. Innovative technologies like robotics, cobots and AI are seamlessly integrated into workflows and the built environment. Our work and schooling is not solely desk-bound. Where we work from is flexible and our workplaces are adaptable. Food production is decentralised and integrated into our three-dimensional city. Plant-based and cell-based food is produced on demand right at our doorstep. We have ample human and community-centric public spaces that allow us to enjoy our free time in our neighbourhood. Having these spaces nearby means we don't need to commute much anymore. Being close to amenities encourages us to stay active and spend time in nature. and we can spend more quality time with our loved ones at home.
I propose that only by committing half of the planet's surface to nature can we hope to save the immensity of life forms that compose it. Edward O. Wilson, in Half Earth. The 5050 city commits half of its footprint to nature and the other half to urban spaces. This strikes a balance between natural and man-made systems. It restores and regenerates climatic and ecological systems, allowing biodiversity to thrive. Humans become the stewards of these nature reserves within their city and build a relationship with flora and fauna. By reserving 50% of the city for nature, biophilic environments are created that benefit all living creatures and provide valuable ecosystem services. Services like filtering our air, cooling down the ambient temperature, providing shade and producing the oxygen we need to survive. These natural spaces provide habitats for all kinds of animals, bringing biodiversity back into the city. In the future, our cities will undergo transformations to be people, community and nature-centric. The future of mobility moves us away from busy above-ground roads full of private vehicles to mainly public modes of transportation. Roads gradually transform, reducing the number of lanes as demand falls due to a diverse and inclusive mobility system. Ultimately, they turn into green pathways for healthy and active mobility like walking, cycling and PMDs. They are paved with PV panels that generate solar energy. On-demand autonomous vehicles transport us above and below ground, even underwater. The ground level is freed up for people and nature. because highways and other urban connections are moved to lower and subterranean levels. We can navigate the city three-dimensionally, above ground, underground, and through the skies. The city will have space for nature to thrive, creating untouched habitats for biodiversity and fostering a sense of stewardship for our natural world. We have to restore nature. Our survival depends on it. Rewilding the city means giving substantial parts of the urban environment back to nature and natural spaces and letting them run their course without much human interference. We care for nature by not taming it and giving it room to breathe. We create natural environments for a rich diversity of animals to make their home in. In turn, these spaces give back to us, triggering our biophilic response that gives us a sense of wellness and calm. Providing us with ecosystem services like cleaner air and water and cooler, more comfortable temperatures. Moving from segregated 2D urban planning to innovative integrated 3D planning saves time, space, energy and emissions and increases people's quality of life. Our lives take place within a three-dimensional 15-minute sphere. Three 3D planning allows us to intensify land use both horizontally and vertically with multiple ground levels and multiple urban connections from below ground to the sky. The high-density, high-rise, high-immunity urban planning approach layers and integrates systems vertically. There is a subterranean services and logistics layer, commercial, community and nature layers on or near ground level, 
residential, food production, work and office layers in the middle, and aerial drone and energy layers at the top. 